Hey guys, my name is Shy, and I was sitting around writing down in my journal here um, my intentions and kind of uh, action plan for the North Node in Taurus and I thought why not turn on the camera and uh, just share this because some of my some of my intentions that I'm setting might help you out. Um, of course, you're going to want to, like the first thing you do, I think, if you're kind of uh, into astrology and interested in how the transiting North Node affects you, is to check your chart and see what house is transiting because the house is going to make a huge difference in how the general theme of North Node in Taurus affects you personally. Um, you know, if it's transiting your fifth house, then it's going to be all about you and unleashing your creativity in a very um, kind of ground like spiritually but yet grounded way that strange Taurus energy that is spiritual and yet grounded right um, and if, but if it's transiting your 12th house and maybe you have Saturn in Taurus in the 12th house <laughs> then you're going to have like be reconciling some major like life endings in, in your life and you're going to be in an entirely different situation so definitely check your house. Um, for me, happily, it's trans transiting my seventh house and I have Jupiter in Taurus, so I am like really excited about it. It's going to be a good time for me. <laughs> um, like really like expanding and especially expanding my interpersonal relationships, which actually kind of scares me because if you have heard me talk, like I don't socialize like ever, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to go, but here we go, right? We're all going to be in for a ride. And it's worth also noting that Uranus is also transiting uh, Taurus, you know, for several years and Uranus is like breaking up the earth plane, breaking up earth energy and like making space for growth and expansion to happen. So at some point, the North Node is also going to be transiting Uranus. You know, I didn't check to see when that is happening, but that will be, that will be interesting. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I would have to do a reading on that. <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I will at some point to find out what happens when the North Node transits Uranus, but yeah, and then we also have the eclipses happening in the Taurus Scorpio axis, which I have done a pick a card reading on. I'll link below if you're interested in that. Um, what's also worth noting is that, of course, since the North Node is in Taurus, we also have the South Node in Scorpio. So check your chart for Scorpio as well. If you're a Scorpio Sun or Moon, then the South Node is going to be transiting like a really massive like part of you, right? Either, you know, your your consciousness or your subconsciousness, right? And uh, you're, you will be forced to change. You'll be forced to change when the, when the South Node scrubs through um, like a really significant part of your part, part of your chart like that, then you will, you, you'll just, you'll have to change it. it <laughs> just think of anybody, you know, who is a Sagittarius and think about how their last year and a half has gone because the South Node uh, was just in Sagittarius. And I know a couple of Sagittarius people and yeah, their, their life is not the same as it was a year and a half ago, put it that way. And I think before I get to my specific uh, intentions here, I also just want to mention <sighs> what helps me think about the significance of the North Node in Taurus and why I'm so excited about it is where it, the North Node has been in Gemini, right, for like a year and a half. It, it, sw it switched into Gemini in 2020. <laughs> and Gemini energy, right, so mind it is thoughts it is thinking and it is a multitude of thoughts and thinking i know gemini energy because i'm a gemini moon <laughs> and it's um so i actually i just had the north node transit my gemini moon um my, my moon by the way is in the eighth house and what have i been doing for the last year and a half talking about occult stuff with lots of thoughts and communication anyway so we've been in this space of like generating a multitude of thoughts generating a multitude of air energy and just so much like Gemini isn't necessarily like conflicting, right? But when we're generating so many thoughts, so many different things, and everybody's up in their head and everybody's up in thinking, I mean, it's not hard to look around the world and see how we've been like up in the mental space and how there has just been more variety of viewpoints and <laughs> everything happening, right? So we're coming out of that. This is like, bam, we're coming down out of Gemini space into Taurus, the earth plane, earth energy. It's the first earth sign. It is solid. Um, it is. <sighs> can you see actually the change in my energy? Um, just as, as I even, uh, started 
talking about that as I started tuning into that just made me want to stop talking. It made me want to go slow. And now I'm thinking Taurus. And now I'm thinking like I'm in the forest, right? My, my roots are growing down into the earth and I'm like drinking up the water and I'm feeling the wind in the trees and I'm just like grounded, grounded, grounded into the earth. And it just makes me want to like be a mushroom. <laughs> like it, it, it makes me just want to breathe the smell of the forest and just be so, so grounded. And I feel like earth energy people, whether you have earth energy in your chart or if you just really feel like an earth energy person, right, um, are going to enjoy the North Node in Taurus more. Um, fire signs and air signs might find this a little bit uh, restricting because it's going to be a little bit like of a slowing down. Um, and so to that end, Oh, and by the way, um, there's different ways of measuring the North Node. So depending on how you measure it, we either say that the North Node moved into Taurus on December 22nd, which is my birthday, which is funny to me. <laughs> um, the other way, it's happening on January 18th. Man, I could barely read my note. Um, I think I wrote down January 18th, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> so what I wrote down here, my intentions and action plan for the North Node in Taurus is to ground like it is my full time job. I mean, like every day. And I, I used to ground the whole time that the North Node was in Gemini. I would ground by sitting on my fourth floor apartment and just like astrally traveling down to the center of the earth and like grounding in my head. I would ground in my head, right? Which works and is great and is beautiful. And I will continue to do that. It's a practice I recommend. But North Node in Taurus, this is like walk down to the river, to the beach, to the, the desert, like whatever environment you have around you, even if it is like the boulevard in the side of a sidewalk, if you're in the city, right? Is like get barefoot, get barefoot in the dirt, connect with nature, like physically, right? Physically, physically do stuff with your body. This whole thing is going to be about the more you can connect with your body and the more you can connect with the earth via your body, the healthier this is going to be, right? So I am like, I'm, you know, taking ground my, my physical grounding practices to a new level and doing things um in my body that i might normally feel uncomfortable doing like i don't really like going barefoot honestly i make a point of doing it because i know it's you know good for me <laughs> um but i only like to go barefoot if the, the grass is nice and clean and it looks all nice but you know i might try to go barefoot on, on like surfaces where i don't normally like to walk because i like I, I feel like i don't want to touch the earth right and that's a mentality that i know is not going to serve me for the next year and a half, right? It's This is like get down and dirty in, with the earth. <laughs> so ground like it's your full-time job every every day, as often as often as I can. That's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I'm gonna be focusing on learning new physical skills, which is again, another thing really difficult for me because I am like a head person, right? I'm up, up in my head. I'm entirely uncoordinated. I think about everything and imagine everything and I do not really pay any attention to reality. So I, I am focusing on learning new physical skills. And interestingly enough, on my, my 33rd birthday on December 22nd, which is one of the dates for the North Node in Taurus, my husband got me a longboard, of course, with a full set of helmet and full body pads and whatnot. So I've always wanted to longboard, but I always felt like I can't because obviously I'm not good at things like that, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be out there every day in hot pink elbow pads, um, learning to longboard. And I've only been able to try it once because it's been snowing here, but I got it one day in before it snowed. And, um, I found it was actually quite intuitive. I was able to actually like go, I went like a whole mile and made it back and didn't die. Uh, and it was great. And I, I found that I could really, like if I really focused on like my body and focusing on moving my body, um, you know, sports people are going to be laughing at me if you're into sports and <laughs> I, I, I know I'm, I'm like ridiculous, right? But it was like a, it was like a spiritual, unusual experience for me to actually connect with my body and find that I could control this like piece of wood on wheels with my body and without falling off. I was really surprised. And it, it gave me a really interesting sense of empowerment to be able to like do that. So stuff like that, right? Learning a new physical skill, even things that are like way outside of my comfort zone, i um, going to be doing because, and I say it was a spiritual experience because I instantly understood. And I was like going down a really, really slight, like decline, right? Like a really small hill. Um, and I, I was like, you know, doing the carving thing <laughs> on the longboard. And I, 
instantly understood like the the metaphor there. I was like, I if I could live my life the way that people longboard, you know, by sl like slicing down the hill, going with the flow, right? It's all about flowing. And then, you know, if you have to get up a little bit of a hill, you have to like pump up the hill, right? You have to push up the hill. I don't even know longboard terminology. So if anybody longboards watching this, I'm sorry for looking ridiculous, <laughs> but uh, you know, so you have to like kick with your foot to get up the hill, right? And like, that's a little bit tiring, but then you go down again and this this whole like, flowing of energy and I, to feel that in my body to really experience it was like yes this is like a physical metaphor for how I want to live my life even like on a consciousness level so very cool I am excited to explore more of that I expect that there is a lot to be explored um, especially because I'm assuming that most of you watching this are um not all of you. I, I, I can tell that there's a few athletes watching this and you're, you're kind of laughing at me and, that, and that's fine, right? Um, but uh, I'm going to bet, I'm going to guess that the majority of you are probably more like me where you're pretty disconnected from your body because that can really happen to, you know, people really interested in consciousness, right? We're often like up in our heads. So really, really, really a whole new plane of existence to be explored by connecting with your body. What else? Okay, I wrote down, uh, ponder the meaning of life and death. <laughs> um, I don't really want to get into that too much in this video because I talked about that in my pick a card reading on the eclipses on the Taurus and Scorpio axis because I think those themes are going to be showing up mostly in Taurus and Scorpio season when the eclipses are happening. Um, yeah, and I'm my guides are reminding me of a new moon, a new moon, a Pisces new, it was a Pisces new moon. Like bear with me while I try to connect the dots here. They're, they're telling me this is important. Um, there, there was a, a few years ago, there was a new moon in Pisces that was directly conjunct my North node. Okay. And that day was one of the most like spiritually, like energetically intense days of my entire life. And I actually got physically sick from the intensity of the ascension symptoms. And I, I realized later it was because the, the new moon, um, so we had sun in Pisces, moon in Pisces, and then the, it was all happening on top of my north node in Pisces. And it was like this, the biggest fear facing moment of my life. So something happens, there's, there's a significance. I think, I think the point I'm supposed to take away from this is that when the north node and like the moon like a full moon or a new moon, I think especially a new moon, um, when they line up, it's like extra ultra intense. So I don't know if any of the Taurus and Scorpio moons or eclipses are going to be really close to the North node or South node, but that is something, if you're interested, really interested into astrology, you can check that out. That would be something to watch out for. Um, yeah, so pondering the meaning of life and death that's going to be the really, really heavy lifting of the Taurus Scorpio axis thing going on because I think all I want to say for now is that we're going to be challenged to evolve our understanding of the cycle of life and death and because the cycle of life and death is the cycle of life, death and rebirth. And we're going to be like really challenged to focus on um, the fact that we, it is our birthright. It is our birthright as spiritual beings in a, in a human body to feel safe in our physical body, to feel safe on earth in a physical body and to not constantly be afraid that we're going to, to die, right? That's most humans are, we're, we're constantly um, making our decisions based on the fact that we might die if we do something wrong or if we mess something up or whatever. It's this fear of death is constantly running in the background and um, you know, some for more people more than others. And uh, if you have this fear running in the background, this like, you know, fears about death, then this is going to trigger that and invite you to work through it. Um, if you have already kind of purged that in the past, this is, uh, it's going to be easier for you, but it might bring it up like again, right? Um, I'm not saying that there's anything going to be anything like specific um, that's going to happen to trigger this. For most people, it's going to be happening you know, you might just have an energetic, um, something energetically trigger you to, to make you work through fears of, you know, death and, or you might like watch a movie that makes you think about it, stuff like that. Um, so hopefully for most people, it's not going to be like actual life and death situations, but you know, 
all things in divine timing, right? <laughs> um, the, the, the point is to, to bring in the rebirth aspect, to know that life and death is simply rebirth because that is what Gaia w would want us to know that if you, if you really, really sink into the earth plane, if you sink into like the 2d matrix, earth energy itself, the earth plane with all of the plants and all of the animals and just everything, it, there is an experience to be had. And I say this because I have recently had this experience of merging entirely with the earth plane and understanding that <laughs> like, so like really, really, I know I'll, you know, in your head, you can go, okay, when you die, you're not really dying. You're just moving on. And like, I, I know that I've had all of these lives and, and stuff, but your human mind still is still afraid of it. Right. But if you can totally drop out of your mind and really just connect entirely with the earth plane, then you understand that <laughs> you would never, you would never, ever, ever, ever fear death because it, it it's not even really anything. It's, it's not really even anything. You just continue on and you continue on as part of this beautiful whole, the whole, the whole earth ecosystem being one whole perfect cycle, one whole perfect organism, everything being connected. And there's just, there's nothing to fear. Like, and I, there's nothing I can say that can really convey this, right? It's something that, you know, I'm, I can say it and you can hear it and you can understand it intellectually, but uh, words, I, 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 like, I'm at a loss for words. L words do not touch, words do not touch the actual physical experience of, like, on only the earth can show you this, right? The only the earth can show you this. Gaia has to show you this. Like, the animals can show you this. The plants can show you this. The mushrooms, mushrooms definitely can show you this, okay? Um, and, and it needs to be experienced. And that's a big, uh, you know, a, a big thing about the this North Node in Taurus is that Gemini, the North Node and Gemini, we were all up in our heads and everything was like in our minds and we were thinking and thinking and thinking and we were being intellectual and blah, 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 blah. Now, North Node and Taurus, we're going to be challenged to experience things in our body and to understand that there are experiences, to like experience that there are experiences that can only be understood through physical experience and that that will be healing to people on a massive level, um, like especially for people who um, hold themselves back from life because they're afraid of death, right? It, it ends up being your fear of death morphs into a fear of life. You're afraid of living because you might die and that doesn't even make any sense. So this whole process, however it unfolds for you, um, is to get you to drop out of your fear of living, right? Um, if you're intimidated about things, you're going to be dropping out of that. Right? You'll, you'll be pushed through experiences that will drop you out of your fear of living um, so that you're no longer intimidated by life, so that you're no longer feeling that things are, or that obstacles are too big or that there's really anything that can stop you. And you're, or, you know, if you're afraid of being overwhelmed, whatever it is, you're going to, that, that's got to go. That's got to go. Because this is about like being alive, about feeling alive and feeling raw and real. And yes, it's going to, oh, it's going to be so good. If you can, if you can really like balls to the wall, <laughs> like completely, um, just go for this energy. It, it, it's going to be so good guys. I'm so excited. So excited for this. Um, yeah, so I mentioned mushrooms. So plant medicine, I, I feel, um, for some people will be something that could be aligned. I guess I'll keep that very vague. Um, what I do if I feel like interested in plant medicine, I put it out to the universe and be like, Hey universe, if it's aligned for me, like if this is, if this will be good for me, if this will bring me a, like a positive experience, like hook me up, right? Like bring it to me. <laughs> and that, that, that totally worked. I, I was brought the plant medicine that I was curious about. I didn't even have to seek it out. The universe like brought it to me. And, um, I had like, it's just completely life-changing experiences that just, <laughs> showed me what it is like to be part of the earth and like yeah so if you're curious about that just put it out to the universe and you'll be aligned with it if it is aligned for you right that's yeah I think that's basically the way I, I approach that anyway <sighs> okay yeah and then I wrote slowing down and long-term vision because Taurus energy can be slow, right? And notoriously slow, notoriously stubborn, but notoriously like sticking it out for forever. Like nothing's going to stop Taurus energy. It just steamrollers ahead, bulldozes over everything, just goes. So (sighs) 
I feel like it's like slowing down into the basic moments of your life, you know, drinking your tea and having like a Zen meditative experience with your tea. Just looking out the window and looking at the clouds and being like, I see the clouds. That's what I'm doing today. I'm looking at the clouds. Um, so, uh, so on the one hand, slowing down and experiencing the moment to moment experience of your life, but then also thinking about where this is all going, um, like in a year, two years, five years, that long-term plan that, that goes back to like learning a new skill or practicing a new grounded, um, learning a new sport or anything like that, that you want to do, because that's going to be a long-term thing. And the point is to not be discouraged by any minor setbacks or any minor obstacles because I wrote, obstacles are just tasks, okay? Because we might get a lot of, um, you might find like setbacks, delays, and obstacles keep coming up. You know, if you were traveling at the end of December to see family or whatever, uh, I know uh, <laughs> my like Christmas trip home was nuts. The, the amount of like delays and obstacles and then like stupid things that happened like over and over and over again to everybody, it was insane. Um, and I know that like tons of people had their flight, flights canceled and all of that, that kind of thing. I would expect to, to see like a lot more of, um, we could get frustrated and get all irritated, um, which is normal, but the more you can just like, <laughs> and just accept that this is where you're at and accept that if you had a delay, then you're supposed to be sitting in that airport for two days. Or, you know, if you can't get somewhere, well, you weren't supposed to go there. Or, you know, if you got a flat tire and you, you, you then your spare tire has a flat, you know, and it's the entrance will be this whole thing. Just like, just accept that this is just the task that has been set for you that day. And that that's just what you have to handle, right? There's just going to be these obstacles and these setbacks and these delays, but they're not like, they don't have to be a big deal. I, I feel like we're going to be invited to just understand that that's just what's happening. That's just what we're doing. That's what the universe has assigned for us to do that day. And the more we can just, you know, just get okay with that, the easier this is going to be. And, um, that's going to be a big challenge for me because man, I, I hate delays. Like I hate, like, I want to be like full steam ahead, everything on my time as efficiently as possible. But you know, serenity now, we're, we're, we're just gonna like chew through everything one problem at a time. And that is the last thing I wrote down one fucking problem at a time, guys. Um, the, the like in with the North node in Gemini, I found that I could like contain thoughts about like a billion different things and somehow like just keep it all up in the air. We're not gonna be able to do that anywhere near as easily with the North node, North node in Taurus because, and I'm already feeling like every time I'm like thinking, how am I going to pull this off? Like, how am I going to make this trip happen? Or how am, am I going to pay all those bills? Right. It's like, no, I just keep telling myself one problem at a time. That is the mantra. One problem at a time. Um, and more than that, it's not just one problem at a time. It's like only the problem that is immediately in front of you. Like if you can't see it, it's not a problem. Um, for example, today, actually, I had a couple examples of this. Um, the check engine light came on and my husband and I just looked at each other and we we're like, it'll go away. <laughs> like let's just keep driving around and we'll restart the car a few times and it's just gonna go away like if the car is still running we, there was nothing wrong with the car right? we couldn't hear anything nothing was being weird um and so we just decided yeah like fuck it we're just gonna if it's not a problem it's not a problem <laughs> and sure enough a few hours later the check engine light went away and we were like knew it right so you know on in another day we might have both like gotten all you know up in like a thing about it and had to go deal with it but now we just we just kind of decided to ignore it and hope it went away and you know what it did and that i'm going to keep using that mentality and like if it if it isn't actually broken like you might think oh the, the tv like started weird for two days um, maybe I need to get, am I going to, is my TV going to break? Do I need to get a new TV? Something like that. But it's like, if it isn't actually broken, don't worry about it yet. Like, don't worry about it until it's actually broken, which kind of sounds like bad advice. I know. So of course, use that with your discernment. There's going to be some things that, that are, that are going to be important enough that you might have to deal with right away. Right. But if it's like, if it's not a big deal, don't, don't make it a big deal. Just, just deal with it when it's a problem. And like, that's it. Right. The only deal with the problems that are immediately in front of you. Um, and I, I also noticed that, uh, like the, I'm recording this, um, the moon has been in Pisces and that's been making me like extra, 
sensitive to other people's energy. We were just driving around a lot today and like every time we pulled into um, like a business or like driving past some houses, I, I was so aware of everybody's energy, like everybody's energy all around me. And um, it had me kind of uh, worrying about, you know, doing the whole thing like, oh, you know, uh, like I was talking to that family member and like, I don't know how they're doing. I'm kind of worried about them and I can feel their energy and blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, worrying about everybody else's energy. Cause I could feel, you know, you can feel everybody else's energy and then you can feel their feelings and then you want to worry about it. And, or you want to worry like, how did that email go over? Did, did, did someone think that my email was weird or like, did I, <laughs> you know, the whole, the whole stupid thing that I'm sure we all do all the time. Right. That I, I just had to go, I have to stop that entirely. Right. No more worrying about like, what are the people thinking about me? <laughs> no more worrying about like did did I write my email correctly it's like if if somebody has a problem with me and it's a big enough problem well then they'll bring it to my attention and I'll deal with it then if, if it's not brought to my attention I'm not even gonna worry about it so I've actually just been distracting myself like putting on putting on like music that I enjoy taking a bath you know or just playing a video game like doing anything to just focus and I'm finding that it's getting easier to focus with the north node in Gemini I like focusing was kind of nebulous right <laughs> um but i'm already finding it easier to just like focus focus and i'm finding that focusing on something especially something physical or like sensory right I, i'm saying physical but really i mean sensory so I could, this could be things like music right that you're hearing stuff like that even like smells or like food right sex you know what any kind of sensory experience <laughs> focus on it focus on it um and i'm finding that it, it's feeling healing in a new kind of way and that's because it's pulling you down into your body and pulling you down into the earth and pulling you out of the cloud of energy, right? It's pulling you out of the cloud of energy. It's pulling you down into the body and down into the earth. And so that's the, I think the last thing I just want to mention is um, this pulling down, this coming down into the body and coming out of the spiritual realm is going to feel to some people almost like a crisis of faith, I think is the easiest way to say it. Some people might feel like they're disconnected, like I can't hear my guides. I, I don't feel like, like I'm connected to the universe. I don't feel like I'm connected to spirit or source. Um, you know, y y or you could suddenly feel like, oh, suddenly I, I don't want to meditate or I'm suddenly like less interested in spirituality and I feel like blah, 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 blah. You know, you could, if you're having worries about your spirituality, like at any point over this next year and a half where the North Node is in Taurus, don't worry about it. <laughs> I promise you, you were just connected as always and that this is just a phase, right? And it is a beautiful phase. And um, if you if you feel weird about it, if you feel like your spirituality is somehow off or you're disconnected and you want to get back into feeling connected, right? Um, find earth-based spirituality, like something that connects you. So like animal spirits or something. Maybe if you're used to communicating with angels, this would be an invitation to communicate with animals or plants, right? And to actually go out in nature and meditate outside or get, get like really communicate with Gaia and actually um, different manifestations of Gaia, like different earth goddess energies, right? You know, goddess work, I think is going to be really, this is going to be a great time for do, for working with goddess energies. Um, that I, I might make a separate video on that because I have a lot to say about working with goddesses because I, that's actually been a big part of my journey in the last like six months or so. And I don't think I've ever talked about it on my channel. So I, I might make a separate video about that, but yeah. <laughs> so you might have to shift your spirituality so that it comes down into the earth plane and down and connecting with your body because this is, it's, this is just all about grounding, like grounding. That's, that's it. That's, that's what this is about. So <sighs> I talked a lot longer than I thought I would on this. So <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.